President Joe Biden announced yesterday that he will call for a suspension of both federal and state gas taxes through September, which the administration says will reduce the cost of a gallon of gas by around one dollar. Let's bring in Yahoo Finance's senior columnist Rick Newman, along with our autos correspondent, Pastor Median. Uh, you know, lots to unpack here, but uh, let's start off with you, Rick. This needs congressional authorization. This is not something the president can just do. You think it's going to happen? Yeah, I'm not sure there is that much to unpack because Congress is Congress is just not going to approve this. Um, we uh, it's a familiar problem for Biden. He can't even get all Democrats to back it. Uh, they they want other things. Uh, Joe Manchin, the veto king in the Senate, says we should not be adding to the deficit. Um, that in itself might uh, push up inflation. It would take money away from the highway trust fund. So Biden has a talking point. He needs to show voters he cares. He needs to show voters he has some kind of plan to do something about gas prices at five bucks. This is not going to pass, however. So, so, Rick, I mean, I have to wonder, the reason why a lot of his own party is not on board because it's not that effective, right? I mean, they talk about a gallon of ga a dollar per gallon. I don't think that's actually true. If even, by the way. Right, if even. If, if even. So we have a tweet, Patrick DeHaan of Gas Buddy actually did the crunch the numbers, uh, and he's found that per week, right? A pickup truck owner would save $5 a week, normal driving. Minivan, 368, full-size car, three bucks, a compact, 221. That's the well, weekly savings that you get for an average driver. I mean, it's not, this any, is- Anything is anything though, right? I mean, but as you, as you point out, Rick, this is maybe perhaps just the Biden administration showing that they're gonna try to do something, even if they don't accomplish it if Congress doesn't right. ultimately pass and this there, thing. There's politics behind this as well. So there are some members of Congress who happen to be in very tight re-election races, Democrats. Uh, Mark Kelly, the, the senator from Arizona. Arizona, is one of them. Yep. He, he, uh, he sponsors a bill that would do this. Um, these uh, Democrats who are in tight races need something to tell their voters. And that is part of why Biden is doing this. He's giving some top cover what? to these to these uh, endangered uh, Democrats in Congress so they can at least tell voters, I want to do something to help. But you. if Congress doesn't do something, is this Biden throwing a democratically controlled Congress under the bus? I think the democratically controlled Congress is throwing itself under the bus. I mean, we've seen this going all the way back to Build Back Better last year. Uh, the, the Democrats, with their very small majorities, um, they only passed one big thing that was a Democratic bill. That was the American Rescue Plan, which now doesn't look so great because that may have contributed to 8.6% inflation right now. So much else they just can't get done and they can't even agree among themselves. Well, again, and the overall question here is about headline inflation, right? Because oil prices are, yes, being felt at the pump, but it's also the reason why everything has gotten more expensive. I guess my question to you, Process, do you think this would have, even if it does get passed, let's just assume that happens, do you think that would have the impact of actually lowering inflation? Because maybe lower gas prices actually incentivize people to get out more. Maybe Ride take more. that extra trip this like, summer. Get that circle going. I mean, yeah. the, the other factor is, are they going to pass on the savings, like the refiners, to the to the consumer, right? They might just pocket that, keep the gas prices the same, maybe paying the same amount of money, and inflation continues, or at least stays where it is right now. So I think, Rick, I think you kind of hit it in the head. It's like, this is a political sort of move to, to say, Biden can say, I'm doing something here. I'm addressing these problems. You're feeling the pain at the pump. But in reality, what's really happening? Not much. Yeah, and you bring up a good point too, which is that, you know, it's actually, a lot of this falls on the, uh, the actual gas stations themselves too, in terms of how they want to preserve, do they want to preserve their margins if this gas tax does actually bring the price down? Well, if a lot of people are still going to the pump because they want to take one more vacation, right. maybe they keep the prices where they're at right now, which makes that $1 estimate a little bit shaky, but you know. I have no idea where they get that $1. Let, let, just there's so people, just cards, yeah. so people understand, the federal gas tax is 18.4 cents per gallon. It's 20 Four cents for diesel. Um, so how do you take away a tax of 18 cents a gallon and turn that into one dollar per gallon savings? I, I I'm mystified by yeah, that. Yeah, I math. mean, is there that many state and local taxes that are going on? But Rick, I had a question for you. What if they actually approve the the pipe, the magic pipeline, the Trans Canada pipeline? Does that do anything? Is that a thing that you can like like a political ploy you can throw now, out there? Now we're just you know? going into a whole. No, but there, the, yeah. Oh no, there are there are a lot of voters who think that the reason gas prices are so high is because Biden killed the tra the uh, Keystone XL pipeline. Um, the Keystone XL, the short answer is that wasn't even built. Um, there was no oil flowing through that pipeline. And there, he didn't kill a pipe, an active pipeline. He just, uh, the Biden administration just did, did not approve the permit for it. Um, oil prices are set in a global market. People don't want to believe this. People want to think that somehow the president has this lever. Well, all the, yeah. He pushes, he pushes gas prices up. He pushes gas. It doesn't work that way. And, um, and that's, that's an assumption that has been made over many, many decades. Although right. I guess what's different about this oil shock and the 1970s oil shock is that America is a much larger producer than it was right. in the 1970s, which makes kind of the administration's posturing on the oil industry a lot more relevant.